Hey, come over. It's a harmless dog. He used to escort post-traumatic soldiers. We've known each other since our 20s. Erez Simchoni is an R&D inventor in agriculture, high-tech and water. 40 years back, he was a paratrooper, a medic, in the IDF 50th Airborne Battalion. Mad artillery went down. Crazy. Erez hangs on his own fragments of memories of the chaos of war. The RPG passed by us. Barely a meter from our APC. But his war is hard to match that of his brothers in arms. Guys from the platoon tell me and my buddy Oded, look, you two were there at the Sabra and Shatila massacre. Oded and I retort, no way, both of us weren't there. We'd been sent somewhere else. You were part of the team that launched mortar flares to light up the refugee camps, they insist. And we keep saying, we weren't there. Look, I think this is some kind of post-traumatic disorder. Whoever went through that war suffers from PTSD. El Hanan, a good friend of mine, was wounded. Gil as well. Oded as well. The bloodied flak jacket, vest and gun of Igal, of blessed memory, was the first time I realized I wouldn't be the same. That was even before I started treating wounded soldiers and saw bodies wrapped in plastic sheets. Operation Peace for Galilee, renamed War Peace for Galilee, then renamed 1982 War or the Lebanon War, and then the First Lebanon War, was a war of choice in the midst of a civil war, like inflicting a wound in an open wound. The whole Galilee region was paralyzed. The Palestinians had turned Lebanon into what we call Fatah land, a state within a state of Lebanon. They controlled the refugee camps there, terrorized the population. It was not that black and white. Though Erez sees himself as an Israeli patriot, the war and the passing of the torch of war to the next generation has made him ever more determined. I see my children's generation, my elder son who served in a commando unit. Three of his friends have PTSD. That's what pushed me to be more active in the Israeli-Palestinian Combatants for Peace organization. We actually reunited a few years ago in Khan el Ahmar, a Bedouin village in the West Bank, which Israeli authorities wanted to evacuate. During the war, I understood the meaning of the song, He who fought will testify, there is no future in war. You treat the wounded, meet your enemy and your Christian Lebanese partners. You take prisoners, talk to them, treat them. You're in the midst of a civilian population. You see murder, massacre. I could reminisce in an organized fashion, but it'd be different. It'd be like I stand now at a history and policy department of some university and read my notes to the students with a timer. This is what we did, and I check everything beforehand with Google. All in all, Erez prefers to keep his memories to himself. I don't speak to anyone about the war except with my friends from the army. That's me. I'm looking for me. That's not me. That's Gil. That's Elchana. Maybe that's me here. I ain't sure. That's it. That's all. Pierre Kloschendler, Kfar Hess, Israel, I-24 News.